Calvary kids, it's great to have you with us. Let's stand and worship together. Get loud and praise the Lord. for us. Like folding laundry so we have clean clothes. I'm pretty sure the dryer is eating all the socks. Grandma even fixed my super kids cape when I tore it flying. Grandma does so much for all of us. That's why I did some super thinking and decided I'm going to help her make dinner. Can you guess what I'm going to make? I have bread, mayonnaise, ham, cheese, and lettuce. If you know what I'm going to make, shout it out on the count of three. One, two, three. That's right, sandwiches. You guys are super thinkers too. 
Wow, this is gonna be a lot of work. Ho, ho. It's Ali. Hello, Poppy. Ho, ho. Cooking up some ham and cheese, are you? Hey, Ali. I want to help my grandma make dinner, but it's gonna take forever. Helping others is great. It's true. God made you to be a helper. Ho. Listen to this story. Just follow me through. Ho. Follow Ho. me through. Follow me through. Ho. Oz got a Bible story for me and you. Don't worry, Stormy Jane. Goldie should be back from vacation any minute. <gasps> Yay! <laughs> Goldie's back. <laughs> Oh, hey friends, I'm Carrie the dog walker and today is a very happy day because Stormy Jane's best friend Goldie just came back from vacation. She's been gone a whole week and Stormy has really missed her. Which reminds me of a story from the Bible about two very good friends. This is David and this is his best friend Jonathan. A long time ago, these good friends had to say goodbye to each other. It was very hard. They promised to always be friends. And David promised that he would always take care of Jonathan's family. And then they said goodbye. Everybody wave. Bye. Well, later, David became the king. And he remembered his big promise to his best friend, Jonathan, that he would always take care of all of Jonathan's family. David wanted to find Jonathan's family, but it was a very big job because he didn't know where Jonathan's family was. But David knew God made him to do big things. David decided to send lots of people to help him find Jonathan's family. When the people came back, they had found someone from Jonathan's family. It was his son. His name was Mephibosheth. He couldn't walk and he needed someone to help him. Well, King David wanted to keep his promise to take care of Jonathan's family. So he had Mephibosheth brought to the castle. He gave him lots of land. He gave him a place to live. He gave him people to help take care of him. And David made sure Mephibosheth always got to eat at the king's table. From that day on, King David took care of Mephibosheth just like he promised his friend Jonathan. How great is that? David did a very big thing and took care of Mephibosheth. God made us to do very big things and help people too. Oh, hey there, Ollie. Ollie, tell me, who made you to do big things? God made me to do big things. Yes, it's true. Now let's hear it from you. Tell me, who made you to do big things? God made me to do big things. That's the truth, friends. You better believe it. See you next time. Bye. So there's your story, and it's all true. David helped Mephibosheth, and God made you to help others, too. Thanks, Ali. Goodbye to you. Who? Ooh. Wow! David did a big thing and helped Jonathan's family. And God made us to do big things. I think I got the story. Did you get it? If you did, say got it. Get it? Got it! Good! God made me to help, so I'm going to help my grandma by making some super sandwiches. Whatever the day brings, God made us to do big things. See you later. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. For the Lord, your God, goes with you. Deuteronomy 31.6 Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. For the Lord, your God, 
goes with you. Deuteronomy 31 6. Hey Calvary Kids, welcome to another edition of our game show, and today, everyone gets to play. If your family is interested in playing one of our games, feel free to email me at the email address listed here, and we'll get you signed up for a future week.
wanna, I just wanna, I just wanna, I just wanna. I just wanna thank you, cause everything you made is so Violets are blue. My name is Lawson, and I'm here for you. Ooh, I really like that sound cue. But if you were here, you'd be cheering too, right? Cause I'm an awesome poet, and I really know it. Did you catch that? I did it again. But not everyone can be an amazing poet. In fact, we're all good at different stuff. As you'll see in this great story I got from my friend Rob about his cousin Adam. Now Adam's class is having a talent show, which is pretty much Adam's worst nightmare. So we asked his mom to tell him what to do. Cause you're really good at ideas. And mom is like, maybe your sister can help. Adam's sister Rihanna is crazy talented. She's a straight-A student and captain of the basketball team. Plus, she's harnessed the power of nuclear fission. Adam asks, what talent can I do? So, Rihanna shows him how to spin a basketball on her finger. But when Adam tries, well, it doesn't go so well. Rihanna says, don't worry, it takes lots of practice. And Adam says, that's okay. You're a great teacher. And then he goes to find his brother, Jaden. Jaden is also pretty talented. He plays three instruments and just published a novel called Peace and War. Jaden says that Adam could learn to play three blind mice on the harmonica for the talent show. So Adam gives it a go. And Adam's like, I don't think that's my gift. But then he adds that Jaden is the best brother ever for stopping right away to help. Adam tells mom, I have no talents. I'm not good at anything. But mom points out that Adam's actually been using his best gift all afternoon. And Adam's like, what, messing up? And mom says, encouraging people. Adam's eyebrows shoot up because he never knew that was a talent. So Adam decides he's gonna ask to MC the talent show and say something good about every single act. Let's hear it for Rob. Doesn't he have an incredible voice? I'm gonna be laughing for days after all of those great jokes from Noah. And when Adam finishes, he gets the biggest applause of the day. So kids, Never try nuclear fission at home, but do always remember that individuality is discovering who you're meant to be so you can make a difference. Now, that's all for today. I gotta be on my way. Can you play that applause cue? Because I made a rhyme just for you. That, that's what I like it, yep. I'll see you guys next time. I'm gonna eat a lime, and it's gonna be really fine. Top bot, yeah. Hey, people. I'm Graham, and we're talking about individuality. Individuality is discovering who you're meant to be so you can make a difference. I know, I know, I haven't had lunch yet and I'm already eating candy. I can make decisions like this. You can too, when you're older. Don't you just hate it when someone tells you to wait until you're older? I mean, it's not like you're a baby. You're not age zero. Of course not. And you know what? You use your 
head. You're no dud. Why should you have to wait until later for what you want now? There's got to be a better way. Well, in today's story, we'll learn about a young man named Timothy and his mentor, Paul. Why shouldn't Timothy be able to make a difference even though he's young? Well, it turns out there's just no reason. I don't think that's spelled the same. See you when you get back. The Bible, it's 66 books of history stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 4, verse 12. Timothy of Lystra must have felt like he lived in two worlds. His mother, Eunice, and his grandmother, Lois, both were Jewish and believed in the one true God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. But Timothy's father was Greek and likely not a believer. Just work hard and be a good man, son. That's what really matters. Okay, Dad. One day, two men arrived in Lystra. Timothy may have heard them speaking in the center of town. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. You can turn to him now. One of the two men even healed a man who had never been able to walk. The crowd was amazed. The gods have come down to us in human form. Uproar engulfed the city. People even tried to offer sacrifices to the two men, Paul and Barnabas, as if they were gods. But in the middle of the chaos, a group of Jews from nearby towns where Paul and Barnabas had preached showed up and convinced everyone to attack the man with stone and stake. Though the Jews dragged Paul outside the city and left him for dead, Paul got right back up. Timothy really surely heard about it. The power of this Jesus is real. Paul left for Derby the next day and returned again to Lystra. Timothy, his mother and grandmother all listen to Paul's teaching, and all three became believers in Jesus. Paul continued on his journey, but left behind a small, thriving new church. We must pray each day and teach each other. Timothy, in the meeting tomorrow, you should tell the story Paul shared, the one about how Jesus raised a dead man. Oh, but I, I don't really like to talk in front of people. I think you shall do very well. By the time Paul had returned several years later, Timothy had become a faithful disciple of Jesus. Everyone at the church spoke well of him. Timothy knows all the Hebrew scriptures. He is kind to everyone, not just those who are Jewish. And his father is a Greek man? Oh, yes. Paul was looking for someone to help encourage new churches, someone who knew God's words, someone who could speak to people from all different backgrounds. Timothy, I'd like you to travel with me and Silas and Luke. Me? Of course you. Oh, but there are others older than me with more experience. They're bold, they're, they're better at speaking. You're the one God has chosen for this job. Wow, well, okay. The elders of the church laid their hands on Timothy and prayed for him. God's Spirit provided Timothy with everything he would need for the work ahead. Amen. We leave tomorrow. Over the next years, Timothy traveled with Paul all around the land to help encourage believers and start new churches. While they spent time in Ephesus, Paul gave Timothy a special mission. I want you to go to the church in Corinth. On my own? You're like a son to me. I trust you completely. The church there needs to see an example of what it means to follow Christ. And, well, you're it. Timothy went to Corinth. Over the years, Timothy became Paul's right-hand man. Paul even put him in charge of the church in Ephesus. The leaders in Ephesus are so much older than I am. Will they even listen to me? Your age doesn't matter. As Timothy settled in Ephesus, Paul wrote him letters to encourage him. 
Don't let anyone look down on you because you're young. Set an example for the believers in what you say and how you live. Also, set an example in how you love and in what you believe. Show the believers how to be pure. Though Timothy met Paul when he was a very young man, he was able to play an important part in helping Paul build up the early church and sharing the incredible news of Jesus. When Timothy was still a young man, the Apostle Paul wrote him a letter. In the letter, Paul wrote, Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. Set an example for the believers in what you say and in how you live. You know what that means? You don't have to wait until you're older to make a difference. You can be an example for other people right now by how you live your life. When a friend is feeling down, you can help them find joy. You can make peace when you see two people fighting, and you can tell them to stop. <laughs> By spreading God's love to the people around you, you can actually point others to Jesus. He's a real lifesaver. So here's the one thing to remember today. You can make a difference right now. Whether you're a junior or as old as 100, you can choose to be an example and make a difference, no matter what. Now, to eat all this candy. Not really. I'm no dud either. I'll see you next time. Zoe, sit. Good dog.